This is going to be um, three stages. That's what these three things are on the side. They're quite easy to remember. But I've got eight steps. You're like, eight steps? Eight steps? And I couldn't come up with a nice acronym um, to, to put it. So if you, as I go through this, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that. As I go through this, if you can try to come up with something better than that, then um, please be my guest. Yeah, okay? an acronym. Spell yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, if you can come up with a word. Then... just call it the <laughs> Sounds memorable to me. Uh, but then the problem is you remember that, but you don't even know how to spell the thing that you just said, which kind of defeats the purpose of an acronym. Simple. It's, it's, yeah, it's not like it sounds obvious. Okay, so I'm going to go through the steps, right? Um, there are eight steps, by the way, because um, I wanted to make them all quite detailed so that when you get all these, you're like, I know exactly what to do. All right? So here's where we begin. The first thing you want to do is analyze the question. Before you put pen to paper and actually write down any variables or equations or anything like that, you just got to understand what's going on. Okay? Now, the way that I do that, everyone's different, but I generally do two things. First, I'll underline all the important parts in the question, right? Because it's all verbal, generally speaking, it's verbal, okay? So there's words, there's phrases, you're like, these are the important bits that I'm going to have to pay attention to. Okay? The second thing I'm going to do, where it applies, okay, is I'm going to draw it. So sort of the lion's share of maximum problems are geometric in some way. Okay, we saw that yesterday with like the A4 piece of paper. Now you can picture it, but it's so much better if you actually have it drawn. And then you can label it and say, here's x, here's 20 minus 2x, and so on and so forth. So that's what I do to just wrap my brain around what is this question getting at. Okay. Second thing you gotta do is remember the question just says try and maximize this or that, and you know these different things can change. So in order to actually talk about and form some um, mathematical statements, you need to assign some primes. Okay. Now anything that can vary in the question, right? Um, the variables. Anything that can vary can have a pronumeral on it, right? But you probably try to uh, minimize the number of pronumerals you have. Because if you have lots and lots, later on you're just going to have to get rid of more of them. In fact, we just want to get sort of towards one or two, right? So have as few pronumerals as you can. But you'll have to say, you must make this statement. You have to say, let the area be A. Let the length of the side length of the square that you're going to cut out from the corners of the sheet, let it be x. You can't just start talking about pronumerals and not introduce them and define what they are. Okay? So maybe you could even say instead of assign, you could say define them. Because you actually have to say it's this length or it's this amount of time, whatever. Okay? I might put that there. You've got to have that statement before you start talking about it. Okay? All right. Now once you've got your x's or your y's or your n's, then you want to take these bits that you underline in the question, right? the important details, and you want to form some equations out of it, right? So for instance, uh, we formed equations like x plus y equals 8, because there's two numbers add up to 8. Or equations like the volume is x times 20 minus 2, and so on and so on. Okay? So form some equations, um, but be careful, okay? because uh, in these two steps, right? these are the two steps where you want to know any restrictions that come with um, these kinds of equations and variables. So for instance, when you're writing down the pronumerals, you might immediately see, for instance, x must be greater than 0. Okay, well, x must be less than 10. Okay? So you'll get some restrictions when you write them down the first time. But you also might get some restrictions based on what kind of equations you've got. Right? So for instance, if you've got like a square root, you know, somehow this disappears. Okay? You might have noted before in this step that, okay, x has to be greater than 0. But once you write down this equation, once you form that, that implies another restriction, namely that x has to be less than or equal to 5. Okay? So both of these steps will give you some restrictions. Okay? All right, what does E stand for? E stands for eliminate any unnecessary pronumerals or variables. Okay? Eliminate unnecessary and we were doing this before, you know, we had x plus y equals 8, that was a nice way to um, form an equation off 
what was in the question, right? But a better way to do it is to say, well, look, I don't really need two variables here. I don't need two print numerals. I can get them all in terms of one, and I think we did it in terms of y. Right? Okay, so where we can get rid of them, and really what we want to end up with is just one. Okay, you want to get down to one, right? Um, you want the quantity that you want to maximize or minimize, you want it in terms of one variable and one only, because that'll let you do the next step, which is differentiate. differentiate. Okay, so the point of getting just one pronumeral, right? Uh, I think we had like dn or n in terms of y, right? Is so that you can differentiate and find the turning points. Oh, sorry, I missed something earlier. Um, sorry, yes? No? Okay. Sorry, I, I missed something, which is up, up here. Okay. Not only should you note your restrictions when you do these two, but when you've got your equations, you should also note discontinuities. They're quite rare, to be honest, but you still have to watch out. Sometimes you'll get them, okay? And they'll come into play later on. All right, now, once you find your turning points, okay, you find one at y equals 4, or y equals... Uh, 3.9 or whatever it is, okay? You've got to show that they're the kind of turning point you're after, right? So you're going to have to test the turning points, okay? You use first derivative on either side, you use the second derivative, whatever method you like, you've got to show that it's a maximum or it's a minimum or whatever it is that you're after, okay? Okay, once you've done that, okay, you've got to then think about all the different kinds of ways that this might be the minimum they're after, or it might not be, okay? So you're going to need to E4 evaluate. Now, what are you gonna evaluate? Number one, you're gonna evaluate where that turning point is, okay? So testing the turning point means what kind of turning point is it? Evaluating the turning point means, okay, take that value, y equals four, and sub it into your original equation, right? And see what number you get out at the end, okay? But don't just evaluate the turning points, you've also gotta evaluate the endpoints or if you like, the, the boundary values, okay? And then you're gonna be able to compare them and see, well, which one is the true maximum minimum that I'm after? Okay, now, by the way, you might, um, you might put this together in a table because it'll just make it easier and clearer for you when you're trying to make a comparison. All right, lastly, when you've got all of that out of the way, you just have to finish things off, okay? So you wanna provide justification you want to justify why, why, for instance, your relative minimum is the absolute minimum. That's what we were doing yesterday. Okay. And then you want to give your final answer in the form of a sentence which directly answers the question that was posed to you. Right? What is the maximum volume? The maximum volume is, and this is where you would probably include your um, units and that kind of thing, centimeters cubed or whatever. Because really, strictly speaking, when you differentiate something, a derivative doesn't have units attached to it. Um, you bring the units in at the end. All right, so I said there's my eight steps, and you can sort of group them together into um, three stages, okay? This first bit here, we're really actually constructing the question that we're trying to solve, okay? You're putting everything together, you're setting it up, you get making sure everything's in the right position before you actually begin to go through problem solving. This step in here, this is the calculus step, right? Okay, this is where you bring in all of your knowledge of stationary points and calculus, differentiation and so on. And then last thing, just conclude. Don't get a turning point and then just pack up and go home. Okay, you've actually got to finish things off and tie it all up in a neat bow. Okay. So if you want, you can call this the three C's of maximum problem solving. That was my attempt, my rather lame attempt to try and make this a little memorable. Like I said, please come up with something better than... than uh, I'm not going to try it, okay? That, that would be really good. Uh, but that's how I want you to approach all the questions that you've got in uh, the exercise I've given you.